the Kings show up, right? And you have you have your best player hit a shot, and Sabonis is doing work. And I forgot they got a four, six points, something like that. And it looked like, you know the Warriors would answer, but it looked like, ooh, young, fresh team at home. This thing isn't in the bag like you figured the Warriors would come through in a game seven. And that's when the Warriors took over and basically never looked back. When they were down maybe three possessions, something like that, and it looked like the Kings had fresh legs, came out of the half, you know, ready to go, coach's quarter, third quarter, and then it was over. And then it was over. The, the, the Warriors just responded like champs. Too much time, man. It, them, them veteran players, as I said earlier when they first put this thing together, Jay, that youth is something when you play against veteran dudes that know what to do. They stay calm, under stress. They don't panic. And then the rest just took over. It was... <laughs> I thought it was going to be a forty, another forty point blowout. Twenty, that's just as bad. So, like to me, this is like these urban legends that become with these stories. And we said it was a moving target because at the end of the day, we're going to get a chance to see who is standing on top of the mountain as the world's best player. Last night, Steph solidified. Oh, I am still him. I was him last year. We had some issues throughout the course of the regular season on the road. And I just want the world to recognize I'm still him. But, guys, it's the way he did it. This all started before the game. So, on Saturday, they had a team meeting. And Steph rarely talks to the team. He talks to people more individually and one-on-one. And Shams kind of reported this on The Athletic. Here's what happened, Key, the day before the game and what Steph said to his teammates. He assured them he could deliver victory if they all bought in. He implored them to put all their feelings aside, which sources with knowledge of the locker room felt was a message directed at Poole, Jonathan Kaminga, and other guys who might have been unhappy for reasons such as playing time and roles. Anyone who wanted to remain in their emotions, he told them to stay at home. Anyone who was ready for their vacation, he told them not to get on the bus for Sacramento. But anyone who did get on the bus, Corey took as their signature of approval and a binding agreement to be on board with the mission. And if they did that, they would get on the bus, and he promised he delivered. With his game, his faith, their solidarity, they'd win. That's what who he the told them before the game, man. about playing time? <laughs> like, who would, who would be walking around there other than, other than Wiggins? Clay, Dre, and Steph. Everybody else, y'all can call and sit down somewhere. Well, Key, they were ass in game six. In game six, you saw Jordan Poole arguing with one of the assistant coaches. No, I get it. But talking the, about the, and Kaminga has talked about playing time. But all, all, all I'm saying is it takes a special dude to be like, yo, y'all leave all y'all feelings aside. If y'all want to do yeah. what we need to do in game seven, just follow my lead. Jay. He took 38 shots, Max. Yeah, Jay. He took and then 19 dropped shots 50. more than anybody else on the team. Yeah, that one, tells you what you need to know. It's one thing to say it, but then go out in the game seven. Now think about the rest of the playoffs. Not as though Steph didn't already have credibility, but you say that to your teammates and then drop 50 in a game seven. And again, like now it looks like a blowout. That first half was nip and tuck. And, the, and to start the third quarter, the Kings jumped up three, two, three possessions at least. Sabonis was looking good. Fox was looking good. That's when Steph was like, all right, you know what? I'm not through playing with you guys. And basically ended the game. Well, Key, Key not only with the, the – people talk about him being the greatest shooter ever to play the game. I'm like, stop. That, that is – don't minimize his greatness by yeah, just saying that. I was about to say, that. that's old now. The greatest that's shooter that. part is old. They need to get rid of that and find I something mean, else. Top two handles in the league. Ooh, he was it. In the league. And by the he way, was, Jay Rose said it on halftime. Hey, Jay, he had the thing on a yo-yo. All day long. And there's like a Harlem Globetrotter feel Ooh. to the way he plays this game. Jay Rose said it the other day. I was thinking the same thing during the game. I'm like, the, the different shot mix at the rim, the layup package combined with the shooting, combined with the handles – that's where it is. It's th 30 is different. It's unbelievable. And I got to say, you know me. I was like, let me see him win a finals MVP. I don't trust him in the clutch after I'd seen him in different finals. Not look like the Steph Curry to me. But, you know, Magic Johnson was called, you know, he started his career as a 20-year-old jumping at center and giving him the business, the Sixers, the business winning a championship. But Magic Johnson hit rough patches. Tragic Johnson. You know, like turning the ball over against the Celtics in the finals, right? It's not like it's smooth sailing. Jordan changed the standard. It was like, now you have to be perfect. You can't ever lose in the finals. But that's not the way it's ever been, right? Bill Russell was sort of like that, and Jordan was like that. But for everybody else, you win some, you lose some. And some guys, it takes time over their careers 
to figure out how to be their best selves in these situations. Clearly, Steph is his best self now. You may mention some names. How tall was Bill Russell? <laughs> six foot nine. How tall 10. was Magic Johnson? Six eight, six nine. How tall was Michael Jordan? Six six. All right, with like a forty four inch vertical, right? Eight. So like, <laughs> so put that into context when you no, talk no. about a guy who's six two and a half, six three. It's never happened before. A guy this like, size, this being the size, best player in the imposing league. himself before. as the best player in the league, never seen before. By the way, that's a hundred percent. The thing that LeBron had on Steph in fifteen and sixteen in those six, years was nine, two sixty. Yeah, man. Yeah, he was a so much bigger, stronger, faster, but. But if you take LeBron out of the equation, it was Steph's league. But LeBron was in the equation. It was his. At this moment, the last couple of years, Steph has proved it's his league now. I mean, if, if he chips up this year, it's his league, right? What more is there to say? I don't know. Is there anything else to Jay, say? Yeah. We got a chance. <laughs> yeah. I, mm. No shot. You don't think, you don't think no the Lakers got a sh- nothing? Zero? No, we can't. No I mean, I, can't I, I, I'll, I'll give y'all like a, a 25. We got 30, LeBron, though, no, man. I'll give y'all yeah, a 35% see. chance. And we, got, and we got a healthy, well, who knows, but we got a healthy <laughs> AD. <laughs> Why do you have to think about it before he, you say it? Even the other is night, Kyrie eligible to happen, and he was looking at his wrists or looking at something. Or, I was like, oh, here we go again. Are we taking Steph hey, Curry for granted? Steve Kerr, Warriors head coach, of course, no surprise, believes we are. Listen to Coach. Uh, he doesn't surprise me. Um, we all take him for granted because he's brilliant night after night, and we've been watching this for 10 years. And we just, you know, you just have to <clears throat> remind yourself every once in a while, big picture, this is one of the great players in the history of the game. Um, but that's how I felt um, you know, back when I, in my playing days you know, with uh, Michael Jordan. You just... You'd see it night after night, so you just took it for granted. So that's how it is with Steph. You just – it's over and over and over again. And um, the uh, the resilience and the um, the work that goes into that and the focus, um, it's incredible to watch. He being taken for granted, Jay? I mean, not by me. I mean, uh, <laughs> I, Max, I, I think you took him for granted. Not in the uh, slice. No, no, no. Well, well, I, I think people – and this is what I mean by that <laughs> – See, for me as a player, I see certain things that are so different. I don't need accolades, accolades to determine the greatness that I'm seeing. I feel for certain people, they validate the greatness level. But as a player who understands the nuances and how difficult it is to, to win, like even my sophomore year of college, I was 29, like 28 in the tournament. We still could have lost. We were down double digits multiple games. So... If it wasn't for some of my teammates getting hot at certain times, I'm never a national champion. So I understand how difficult that is to do. Um, But watching him, and I've said it before, he's revolutionized the game differently than any other player in the history of the sport, other than maybe like Wilt Chamberlain. Kareem in college, yeah. One of those Um, guys. So I've always recognized that I think other people are just – when the well, accolades start to accumulate, then they're like, oh, well, now that compares to the well, accolades. Go ahead, Key, because I want to address the accolades think, thing. But I, go ahead. Think, I think as people, you got to remember, Jay, the business that we work in. The athlete, he's already validated for the athlete a long time ago. When he, when he first started hitting shots from across the court, winning championships, he's already validated. We are always going to do that. The accolades... That doesn't mean anything to us as much as it does people that have never been on the court, been on the field, on the diamond, on the rink. You know, it, it, it's different because they look for certain things. Us as athletes, we look for certain things. His ability to uh, change the game, his ability to be a leader, his ability to do the things that he's capable of doing like we saw yesterday, scoring 50, getting eight boards at his size, let alone the six assists. Those sort of things – we appreciate and understand they like to see the accolades because of conversation. Who's the best and who's the this and where do you rank him at? Opposed to when we see it, we're like, well, come on, man. Who got next? I want him. That's the way we look at it. Right. Totally different. I want to totally address, I want to address the accolades thing, Jay. Um, back in 2016, I was doing Sports Nation with Marcellus Wiley, uh, and we would – I was arguing, look, 
In any other era, LeBron James would be the best player in the game. But look what Steph is doing. The rules of this era and the way the game is played, even though it's unfair because it's only right now, it wouldn't have been 20 years ago, but right now, Steph's the best player in the game. Even better than LeBron. Look what he's doing. He was the unanimous MVP that year. Mm -hmm. And then the finals roll around, and his offense, scoring offense, is diminished, right? But the team is winning. And there were people who were arguing, look, man, he's not quite playing. And I was like, no, 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 he's letting the game come to him when they're, when they're drawing, when he's drawing attention, he's making the right play, and his team is up in all this. And then things happen, and it gets down to a game seven, right? And I was there at Golden State, game seven. I bought tickets so I could root, right? I'm not going to sit in the press box. And I got great seats, center court, the whole thing. And I watched as the greatest half-court offense ever, history of the game, led by the unanimous MVP, failed to score a single point in about five minutes. And it was careless play, and it was fear to shoot, and it was missing shots. He was very loose with the ball back at that yeah. stage of his career. Yeah, and LeBron came through. So I had to, like, I don't go in with the thing. Now that I'm going to prove I'm right. I go in, okay, here's new evidence. I had to adjust my thinking. LeBron imposed himself, mm -hmm. right? He was, and Steph, not quite, not yet. And... Then since then, he was, he's been excellent, but it was Kevin Durant's turn to be MVP both times, and Steph was playing great, but, you know, KD was the lead guy. Then against Toronto, he started hitting big shots, even though they, everyone was hurt. You can't blame him for that. And then last year, he dominated when he needed to. I think Steph, in these moments, it's been the evolution of a player from, oh, my God, he's reinventing the game in the regular season. He's the greatest thing in the world to learning how to still be that guy when it mattered most. So my opinion of him has changed over time based on what I've seen. It's not like, well, since he doesn't have the finals MVP, it's because, no, no, wait, but I've seen moments where because he wasn't finals MVP, the other team won when they needed him most. That's why I said what I said back then about him, and that's why I feel differently now because I see him do it. They didn't have to win that game last night. He took over. He said, no, the Aaron Fox is looking like he's Mr. Clutch and Sabonis is playing, as I said, to start the second half. And Steph said, no, and dropped 50. Yeah, I, I guess I just go back to, like, and I know that it's not linear, Max. I know there's a, there's a journey uh, to the approach, and you get different data points as the journey continues about your overall thesis. There's just sometimes as a player, I see things, I almost cursed. <laughs> like, I see, I'm nope. like, that, that's so different <laughs> because I, I, I guess – Key, like, I, I was molded by the details of the game. Like, and I, I've worked on the craft for so long and so hard to be able to do certain things. I'm like, that is something that nobody else Question. in the game of basketball can do. So for me, automatically, that translates to a hierarchy, regardless of whether that ever shows its face in the biggest game on the biggest stage, because I know sometimes how difficult it is to actually Very get different. There. Hold on, hold on. I, want, I have a Very question difficult. about that. Are you saying that people like me – who are trying, who kind of creating these broad narratives are overgeneralizing about these moments where they don't score in the f last five minutes and he's always been that guy? Or do you agree that he there, has his kind of, for lack of a better phrase, level of clutch performance in those situations has changed? Well, level of clutch performance to me is different than what the package looks like. Putting him in the box of a point guard is so disrespectful. It diminishes his greatness. That dude is not a point guard. Like, it, it, one of the things Coach K told me is, like, you're not a point guard. You're a player. You're a playmaker. He has handles. He has shooting ability. He, that's why it's hard for you. Like, oh, well, Jay, back in the day, you'd have him on the list of your top point guards. I'm like, because that dude is a morph. He's in between. He can play off the he ball. Can, he's everything. Yeah. He's not a point guard. Like, a point guard is like John Stockton. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like He's I, just a point guard. Just a point yeah. guard. Yeah. This dude is different. But I, I do understand why the reason I don't think it's disrespectful is because you can really what you're saying is magic got the top spot. Is it time to start saying it's Steph and not magic? Because magic's also obviously a top 10 player, wherever you want to put it. Why do we need we're positionless basketball now? It's like trying to go back and frame something back in the 1970s. But like, even if it, the game has changed so judged, much, even if it wasn't positionless basketball, He's in a different category. He's in Steph, a bucket you, by himself. Yeah, you. That, certain players in sports, you cannot. And we go through this all the time. We talk about, well, what's Lamar in football? Well, he's not a quarterback, per se, the way you want him to be. This is not pocket passer, hair out the back of the helmet. This is a dude that when he's on the field, it changes everything. And this is the same thing with Steph. Steph is not a point guard. Isaiah Thomas was a point 
guard. That he he was the guy who set everything up. Magic Johnson was the guy who set everything up. Although they scored and they got their points and they got they got their rebounds and they played some defense, but it was different for those guys. It, it is interesting, a different, like, different level. But see, I, LeBron is also can be rated as a point guard, right? But no one says is he the greatest point guard of all time. But he's not oh, a point I, I, guard though. But except that. But he, he kind of is. Like, except that he but, initiates the offense on a lot of his teams a lot of the time. And, but that was kind of like Magic. People want to put Magic in the bucket, of, the, the bucket of being a point guard. I'm like, actually, Magic was more positionless basketball. No doubt. Back then than there was before. Yeah, he was actually probably. He jumped center in NBA Finals he, and, and played center. And, by the way, played some power forward and, <laughs> and played shooting. He was, he was technically the shooting guard in his rookie year. Technically. So, like, it's just. Yeah, but Magic might team. give you. But, see, Magic might give you, Jay. 17 11. assists, yeah. I was about to say, he's going to give you 11, 18, and 12, you know, stuff like that. He might go that route. Or he might give you 20, 9, and 22. It's a different, you know, it's just different with him. The other thing about Magic, why you might want to leave him alone, again, not only does he win the national title and then turn pro goes first in the draft then has an amazing rookie year and the Lakers are the buzz of the, of the sports world, but then in the finals – with Kareem out, the MVP of the league, your point guard or two guard or whatever you want to call him jumps at center and gives you 42, 15, and 7? But that like, that's out. never going to happen. He's but, 20 but, years old, wins the title, wins finals. Guy jumps, never going to happen man. again. Come on, Max, you that, know, pick up basketball. Tallest guy. Oh, well, you wouldn't. Yeah. <laughs> but that also goes back to my original point about Steph. So let's go. MJ, 6'5 and a half, 6'11 wingspan. Mm -hmm. Okay. LeBron James, 6'9, 7 foot wingspan. Magic, 6'9, 7 foot wingspan. Kareem, 7'2, 7 7 5 wingspan. Bill Russell, 6'10, 7 4 wingspan. Steph, 6'2, 6 6'3 6 wingspan. So the fact that we're even having a conversation is ridiculous. It, it's just. But there is no pound for pound in basketball, right? Like you. I understand why you want to give him extra credit, but the, the sport does select out for height. The reason you went two overalls because there was a seven foot five dude in your draft, right? That's why. Because yeah, were you better than him? Yeah, no kidding. But in reality, height makes a difference in that sport. So it, it he's does. playing so at why a disadvantage. That extra, yeah, if it's he's extra at, credit in terms of his acknowledgement of his skills and the impossibility of what he's doing, but not extra credit in terms of where you're going to rank him. Absolutely. Among the most valuable players. Absolutely. Because your value is your value. Absolutely you rank him higher you rank because him of higher. that. Guys. Way higher. Guys, with if, if he if, if Jay if Jay wasn't what? exceptional, he wouldn't have went number two at six two. Allen Iverson, so pound for pound, or inch he was for so inch, exceptional. was better than Shaq, but was he, he better so than Shaq? He was so exceptional at what he did, I don't, he went number two overall. Right. If he wasn't exceptional, he was just a six two guy that was a good point guard at Duke, mm -hmm. he'd be twenty nine. But what, what I'm trying to make a distinct – I'm trying to distinguish between you're trying to give him credit because you know how hard it is to do what he's doing and how much skill it takes. So when you say best, you're almost breaking it down how great you have to be at these I, different I, things I, I, to I, be I, that I, good. I didn't say that's, best. That's dip, so extra credit for what exactly? When you're ranking players, you're going to improve him on the rankings because he has so much skill at his size? Yes. Yeah. But there's no so, so. Would you rank Allen Iverson ahead of Shaquille O'Neal? But it's not because it's he's so much but, but, better but, but, for his But size. the AI comment doesn't work. That analogy doesn't work because AI never won a championship, right? Like he this dragged dude, the, the worst team ever to a but, 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 but no, it's a combination of both, though, Max. You can't that, that, that analogy makes no sense. Zero. There, there's combination of, of both. He has the resume. What I'm saying is the resume. Mm -hmm. How many how many world chips does he have? Well, Alex, come on, no, no, man. I'm not, no, it also no, depends no, who you're I'm not playing going with. Into, I'm not comparing him to AI. I'm talking about Steph. How many world championships does Steph Four. have? How many finals MVPs does he have? One. One. Okay. And he's going to get – potentially he can get another one. I think so. So if the resume combined with the fact that he is 6'2", with the 6'3", wingspan, that elevates the conversation for him differently than other players, in my opinion, because I know how hard it is in to do that. In appreciation, yes. When you're evaluating the greatest of all time, I don't think so. Like Isaiah Thomas getting extra credit because he was short? Is he? Did he get extra credit? Well, you know, he's greater than Magic or Bird because he's shorter. He's a two-time finals champion. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN Plus right now.